today I'm going to show you how to make pressed flour beveled hearts. You need two beveled pieces. I'm going to use hearts. They are four inches. When I'm foiling them, I'm going to foil. You don't want foil to be trapped in the middle. So we're going to foil right to the edge of the outside. So you want the bevel to be on the outside. I'm going to use 732nd foil because this is just for the edge. We're going to use thicker foil to put it together. So I'm going to start with the center here. Right to the edge so that the part without the bevel isn't going to have any foil at all on the edge. Just going to burnish it. So the part without the bevel, you can see the copper foil through it, but there's none on the glass. You don't want any foil being pressed between the two. And then the outside looks like this. Our next step is to make sure that the inside is very clean before we glue our flowers. So I use a paper towel with just a tiny bit of Windex on it. And I make sure that the hearts, the surface that I'm going to be gluing my flowers to is completely clean. You want no fingerprints. You don't want anything pressed between your bevels except for the flowers. The next part is the fun part. I use just clear Elmer's glue. This is actually from the dollar store, so it's not even Elmer's. I go just a tiny bit on my finger, tiny, tiny bit, just to tack my pieces in place. Put a tiny bit on them. This is a pheasant feather. Pheasant feathers signify love. So we're gonna put some of those on our hearts. With the feathers, I only get just the vein. You don't wanna put too much glue on it or it will come through and it'll just, it'll look, it won't look good. So you want to put it on the firmest part. You don't want to put it on the flower petals. You want to put it on the stems. You should have a tweezer nearby so that you can kind of help guide everything onto your palette. And you don't want everything to just to be like super flattened. It's gonna get flattened when you press it. You just want to tack it so that it's in place and it doesn't shift when you put the two pieces together. So once I glue them, I let them cure for about at least six hours. A lot of times I'll let them cure for uh, overnight and then I press them together. All right, now it's time to put them together. So now that they've dried, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that they are super clean before we push them together. So I like to have for this process, I like to have a paper towel, some Windex, a Q-tip, and a razor blade or an X-Acto knife or something like that. So this is what you're going to use if when you hold it up you see any um, glue or anything like that, you can use this to scrape that off. Q-tip is used for the one with the flowers in case you notice any smudges. I spray Windex on one side and use that to wipe and then use the dry side to dry it off because you want them to be perfectly dry when you press them together. This side you want to make sure is totally clean. Clean it off with some Windex and then we're going to use half inch foil to seal them. So I'm taking my two pieces and pushing them together and I'm going to use half inch foil to seal them and I'm going to go around it twice just in case when you're burnishing you poke a little hole 
in the tiny gap between the two because you don't want any flux to get in there. So just wrapping it twice uh, helps seal it just a little bit better. You can actually use thicker foil if you want. I only had half inch as my thickest that I had available here at the house. So that's what I'm using. And I don't use black backed half inch foil. I just use the regular copper foil for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and seal that in nice and tight there. And when you're burnishing, be really careful that you don't poke a hole where those, where the space, the gap was between the two. So you just wanna be really careful, but really seal it down so that there's no way any flux can get underneath your foil. And now we're ready to solder. All right, when we solder them, we're going to use this gel flux instead of liquid flux. Gel flux is less likely to get under the seal. So I just put a little bit on a plate and I'm going to use a foam brush to apply it. Uh, gel flux is also quite fumy. It makes a lot of smoke. So you wanna have some kind of little exhaust fan. You might see the fumes coming up and get sucked right into the exhaust fan. This, I love this little exhaust fan, it's great. Um, so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna apply it, but I'm not gonna apply it too generously, just enough because uh, I really don't want it to get under the seal. I am using solder with lead in it, so it's a 60-40 mix. You see those fumes coming off and they're getting sucked right into the exhaust fan, which is awesome. Anytime you solder with lead, you should really use an exhaust fan, but especially with this gel flux. I don't use gel flux on jewelry. I only use it on something that has the copper foil seal. So where I'm pressing something between two pieces of glass and I don't want my flux, my flux is very corrosive and I don't want it to eat through the seal and get between the pieces of glass. As soon as I'm finished soldering each side, I'm gonna wipe that flux off immediately also so I have less, it's less likely for it to get under the seal. I'm gonna go ahead and do both sides. So again, just applying that gel flux with a foam brush. Wiping it off before we do the edges. So to do the edges, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to apply a little bit of flux all the way around. There's usually enough solder from it um, kind of falling over the edges to go around the edge. Alright, and then I just want to make sure that the front side of it looks really good, that my solder didn't get any creases or lines in it, because that's the side people are really going to be noticing. Just want to make sure it looks good. Put a little extra solder on there. Touch it up a little bit. Then for the jump rings, I've made I made these jump rings with 16 gauge. Uh, tin copper wire and somewhere I have it here and this device you're gonna take your jump rings and the open end you're just gonna dip the open end into your flux just the open end you don't want to get the whole jump ring covered in flux or else your solder is gonna get all over it And just kind of hold it there for a second. Make sure that your solder sets 
I'm just dipping that one in. Looks like I need a little more solder. Try to even them out here. If you get it on and it's not even, you can just use your soldering pen to loosen up your jump ring and move it. But that looks good. Okay, then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to clean it with this quick clean. Just clean both sides real quick with it. I use paper towels for everything, for every stage. I don't use water at all. Okay, and now it's very shiny, but I like to give mine an antique look. So I use uh, this Novacan black patina. I'm gonna roll up a paper towel. <laughs> Get my paper towels. I really like the Target brand the best. This is actually Scott brand, and I'm trying to use them up. I don't like them at all. I like the Target brand. Bounty's too absorbent. And we're just gonna generously apply it on there, but you want to make sure you're not getting it under your seal. If you go quickly, you should be all right. And then we're gonna use the quick clean again. Let's get both sides of it real good. Get our paper towels. Make sure you get all of it off this time. This time you wanna really clean it good so that you have all the moisture off of it so that there's no way you'd get any white mold on it. wanted to make it like some of mine have leaded crystals and things like that hanging from it you would have just soldered jump rings on it before you patina it. I hope this helps. Good luck guys!